Good afternoon. I'm Dave Donahue from Mid-Atlantic Atlantic Emergency and Safety Consultants. I've been a hazmat tech for about 30 years and I'm putting together a series of presentations today starting with uh, vapor pressure and vapor density. Kind of a way of helping you out at 3 o'clock in the morning when you're, you're looking at a tanker truck on its side, you're bleary eyed and you're trying to remember the stuff you learned in hazmat operations or firefighter school. So one of the first things they talk to talk about is uh, uh, vapor uh, uh, compression and how things are compressed. Um, gases can be pressurized, like our SCBA cylinders, where we jam a telephone booth down into a, a small container. They can be liquefied, like LPG, or they can be cryogenic, they can be frozen. The real intent is to ship as much as possible in the smallest container. So from that, you get expansion ratios for the stuff that gets out of its container. Um, we're going to be using dry ice today to kind of show you some demonstrations. Dry ice expands to 554 times its its uh, original size when it moves from being dry ice into a vapor state. So this little one inch piece of dry ice here in my hand is, would actually be 554 inches long in the same width. I'm going to use uh, two bottles here. One has going to have a little bit of water in it, one's going to be dry. Um, and what's happening is I'm going to drop the dry ice in, put a balloon over the top, and as time is going on, this dry ice, this carbon dioxide, is turning to vapor, turning to gas and escaping in the atmosphere, and it will eventually start to fill up that balloon. And I'm going to use water for this other one here, just putting a little bit in, because as you remember, for those who dive, uh, water is a really good conductor of heat, and air really isn't. And that's why you can walk into a 140-degree sauna and it feels good, and if I spill 140-degree water on you, it'll burn you. The, uh, the water's really a good conductor of heat. So again, I'm going to put some dry ice in there. And the water is going to speed up the reaction a little bit. And it's going to vaporize. You're already seeing some frozen water vapor there. Carbon dioxide is a heavier than air gas. And unfortunately, because we have not mastered flying, we tend, it tends to end up around where we are. What you're going to see over the next couple of minutes, if I ever get the balloon on, is uh, the balloon is going to fill up with vapors. And the dry one is already happening. Expansion ratio is really important, especially those who are doing a lot of propane emergencies. And there we go, it's trying to fill right up. Uh, propane expands about 540, 554 times its, uh, excuse me, 270 times its, uh, its, its state, which means a simple barbecue propane tank can fill up about 10,000 cubic feet, putting it in the uh, explosive atmosphere. That's about the size of five houses. So um, I know propane is a pretty common material out there. We run, we run those calls all the time. Just remember that it's going to expand out and put a huge area in the vapor state. Um, in fire school, they go over vapor pressure, they go over vapor density, specific gravity, but they give you nothing on the truck. Um, we get this thing here, the, the Emergency Response Guidebook, which is a really good first piece of, of information, but it doesn't have anything about specific gravity, vapor pressure, uh, relative gas density, flammable ranges, any of those things. I highly recommend that you invest about 10 bucks, 12 bucks, uh, and invest in an IS pocket guide. You can get it online, you can get it as a CD, um, you can put it on your smartphone, your prayer books, um, and again, 3 o'clock in the morning, it's a good resource to have. So as you can see, the expansion is happening, the carbon dioxide is turning into a gas, the one with water in it is expanding faster just because the water is heating up the uh, dry ice a little faster, but eventually that little tube, like I said, is going to expand up to five, uh, 554 times its normal size. The second concern when dealing with vapors is where they're going. Um, and we're going to use dry ice again to show you a couple different things here. There's a number of mnemonics out there to kind of help you remember where the vapors are going to go. Um, the thing that I always keep in mind is if it's coming from a liquid, the original, the original product's a liquid, you know, gasoline, diesel fuel, something like that, it's always going to sink. And again, because we haven't mastered flying as a species, it's going to be down where we're at. Um, so those vapors are going to sink. And the reality is most of the vape gases that we run into, you know, we run into carbon dioxide, we run into uh, um, you know, uh, fluoropropane on the road, propane, uh, those are going to sink. The ones, that are, the ones that will float, that are lighter than air, are hydrogen, helium, hydrogen cyanide, hydrogen fluoride, methane, ethylene, diborane, illuminating gas, which is a mixture of uh, methane and ethane, carbon monoxide, acetylene, uh, neon, nitrogen, and ammonia, 
Um, the mnemonic for it is 4-H Medic Anna, and Dave Peterson out of uh, Madison, Wisconsin, came up with that one, so he gets he gets uh, props for that. What we have here is um, candles at different different levels, kind of get us in the mood, kind of get us in a zen place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put dry ice up here. I'm going to put some water to it to make the vapors uh, spread out a little faster, and you're going to see it sink. Dry ice, this is carbon dioxide, not carbon monoxide, is a heavier than air gas. And what you're seeing, if you're looking right here, I don't know how it's going to show up on the camera, you're starting to see a little bit of vapor. If I spray some water over it, you'll see some vapors. Those are actually, that's actually water vapor uh, in the air, those vapors. It's not the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a colorless gas. I'm going to put it here. And if I had my oxygen sensor with me, I was putting it out here, I would actually see the oxygen level starting to drop, which leads to a question, while I'm setting this up, if my oxygen meter on my floor gas meter drops half a percent, how much has the quantity of air changed? And while we're doing this, I'll let you think about it, and then in a few minutes, I'll give you the right answer. So, and that is a very critical, important piece of knowledge as to how uh, what your oxygen meter is reading. I'm going to add a little bit of water to speed up the reaction a bit. And you're seeing the water vapor spread out. And you're starting to see the candles flicker a bit. The reason for that is carbon monoxide, or excuse me, carbon dioxide is getting out there. And it's actually changing the oxygen concentration. If I bring this candle up closer, right there. Actually, you see it's starting to spitter a little bit as the, the vapors are getting over that way. Closer here. So you're seeing it start to, to drop a little bit. So the oxygen level is actually fluctuating a bit, and it's dropping down below the 21% that's normally in air. And the closer I bring, the, bring these pieces to the flames, getting close, you'll actually see the flames start to die down. If I put them close enough, they'll actually kill the flames. What's happening is the carbon monoxide is melting off, it's sinking, and it's taking the place of the oxygen, which is exactly what happens to human beings. Here we go. That one's kind of hot on my hand. There you go. So, the question was, <coughs> if my oxygen meter drops a half a percent once I enter an atmosphere, how much is the part of the air has changed? And again, this is 3 a.m. chemistry. This isn't exact. Roughly speaking, you have changed 2.5% uh, of the air, 25,000 parts per million. And the reason for that is air is, roughly speaking, one-fifth oxygen and four-fifths nitrogen. And there's some other gases mixed in there, but that's roughly what it is. You're only reading the oxygen part. So unless you're reading the the replacing gas is nitrogen, that half a percent of oxygen is changing is also changing half a percent in each of the other five, or these you know, four pieces of nitrogen that are in the air. Um, so you have a half a percent times five is two and a half percent, 25,000 parts per million. Um, so that's important to remember. A lot of people uh, think that a half a percent change in oxygen means that half a percent of the air has changed. It hasn't. Two and a half percent of the air has changed. So that, that can be a very critical problem. You could be in the flammable range, you could be in a toxic atmosphere and not realize it. So that's what I have for you today. Uh, stay tuned, there'll be some more things come out. Take a look at the, uh, the expansion ratio here. We're starting to see some, some much bigger balloons than we started off with. And that's it for today. Thanks, take care.